This is Football Daft with Stephen Purden. Midfield dynamo and average actor. Chris Toll. Target man. Suspicious character. And... With the top end of Stevenson, Grenado! Welcome to Football Daft, the Daft of Scottish football podcast around. I'm Stephen Purden and let's welcome the team. First, a man who this week nearly got banned from the Football Daft WhatsApp for lip, lip syncing to We Are The Champions. It's Chris Paul. Hey, what's happening, lads? How are you Chris? feeling this week? He's all good, aye? Aye. Well, I've had a great week so far. So great. Like, just like any other week, mate. Aye, enjoy it. Aye, and now welcome a man who's used an asterisk more times this week than he ever has. It's Grado. Go <laughs> 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 I've just been going on Facebook, putting asterisks on the Celtic fans' posts, and then I went on, I just had to delete them off, and no, I better not, I'm going to say what I mean, it's, it is what it is, not, I mean, it's, like, I, I was on Twitter this week, and I just reminisced and put on a wee gif of a day I remember going to the game with my dad, when we won nine in a row at Paradise, I actually seen it happening, it was great, just reminded me of that, really, you know what I mean? Aye, uh, some feeling in it. That tweet it was seeing it. It was oh, a great tweet. Aye. see seeing it with some feeling. Actually, seeing my team complete nine in a row, complete the fixtures, and actually, mate, I, I seen my team complete nine in a row. I was on Twitter when that tweet came through for the SFA. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just, I, I, I'm, I'm. I'm glad you've had a good week, Toll. I, 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 I think if we're going to be honest, I think it was always going to happen, wasn't it? Aye. 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 We're, not just, we're not just... Aye. We're not like I said on Twitter, eh, after it got announced, regardless of what happens from now until then, next season of Scottish football is going to be fucking bedlam from start to finish, man. I, I think, think it was it, us. If it's behind closed doors, right, I think, in a weird way, it might be a good thing because <laughs> it is going to be carnage. It's going aye. to be... Next year. Uh, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. But if it's behind closed doors, then does it go into the streets? That's what you've got to fucking worry about, isn't it? I know. No, but mate, I'm sure you've had a good week, right? I'm sure you've had a good week. It's all, it's all good, mate. It's all you good. know why? It's, it's a, it's a bit of an anticlimax, if I'm honest with you. It really is. Is it? You know, it, okay. As you want, to, you want to see them celebrating and lifting the trophy and all that and doing it. It's it's a shame the way it's the way it's came about, but I'm I'm not going to lie. I think if the season had have went on, Celtic would have won the league. The way that they've done it is it's unfortunate, but I think we need to, we need to just fucking bite the bullet and get on with it. Aye, and one of the the main aye, like you want to see your team doing it. I mean, all joking aside, you want to, and it is you would have. I don't know. You don't want this. This can't be helped. What's happened, right? But. You'll always have a sour taste going on ever. I'm not being funny saying this, but no seeing your team actually doing it with the fans there and all that, which he's probably would have. He's were playing that well. He's were that far ahead. So, but no seeing your team doing it, it's a shame for you. And I'm no patron saying that. It's not, I know what you're saying. It is. It's, it's shite. And you know what? You feel for the, uh, the people that are involved as well. You know, you see the people that have actually got a hand in like the players and the staff and all that at Celtic Park as well. You know, they're going to be, they're, they're not going to feel it the same way as they would have felt it if it was one on the pitch. No, no. And you'll not get any of them to admit it, but I think, I think that's the truth. Aye. And this week, one of the lowest points of this week for me was when the news got announced and I looked at my phone and there was a video on my phone and it's you. And it wasn't just a wee bit, it was the full fucking version of the song and you sang the full lot of it. And then I went to make my wife and my kids lunch on that day and all I kept singing was we are the champions because of you <laughs> <laughs> I'm walking about my house singing we are Nicholas like, what are you doing I'm like I don't know <laughs> you know I say I say hang at least you've got a bit of practice now if he's ever won the league again you'll be able to do it on the pavilion stage <laughs> That's true, it's true. Not to say. <laughs> hey, dude, I was hoping you were going to pick it up there, man. <laughs> Did I actually clamp the two of you? You're fucking right. dancing. <laughs> Move on. 
Aye, uh, but mate, just don't be sending any more videos like that, right? Cause, okay, man. To be uh, fair, he's, he could have been ten times worse. It could. It was fine. Oh, it was. It was fine. And it, I watched that, mate. And you're very <laughs> good at lip syncing, man. Uh, listen, see when you've sang "We Are the Champions" as many times as I have, <laughs> man. You know, <laughs> fucking <love. laughs> yeah, That's what happens. That's what happens. You're saying. It could have been worse. I'm going. I'm trying to human. It'd be nice to him. Any fucking hits me back. No. <laughs> Come on. I think I forgot the words to that song about fucking the late nineties. <laughs> Don't be giving him any more ammo. You know, sure? Hey, listen. What else has been happening anyway? Apart from that, what else has been happening? Well, this week. What did I do this week? I've bought a gardening. Gardening, mate. Doing stuff in the garden. Painting fences. Getting slabs laid, all that shit. You know what I mean? Oh, well, your sale grads. Working. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> you still, you still doing the hanging? Everything. Aye. Fucking Aye. day, never met. Shut up. I said just working. <laughs> no, I done. No, I done Love. yesterday, lads. I made a fucking big giant fire out in my back garden. We eat. Well. You know, man. No, I like you. Don't worry. Is it it was in a, it was in, yes, it was in a fire bin. Don't you worry, Gradle. That's a fire not made in a fire bin. I bought, a fire, I bought a fire pit. Aye, that's fine. You don't. What are you talking about your fucking wheelie bin tool, no? Oh, a fire bin. One of the ones, the metal ones with the holes oh, in there. Right. Oh, fucking right, man. Oh, aye, an official. Mean, I'm not going to put a fire in my fucking wheelie bin. I thought, I thought you fucking meant a, a fire bin. I thought it's fucking sent wheelie bin. Wheel the bins in the fire tube. <laughs> yeah, I was getting a fire. We turn it to that. We turn it to that. You know what? We turn it to that. Great little man, fucking turning on fire safety. He's not a joke, son. <laughs> <laughs> you should have actually. You should have actually made us aware that you were you were having some control burning at the back door. But I'll, I'll speak to you about after the show. Okay, sorry about that. Mate. Oh, okay. I should never fucking mention it now. Well, you should have. Boys, I've got to tell you this story. You know, he's talking about what he's been up to. Everybody's been, right. everybody's been doing a quiz, haven't they? Oh, I've got, aye. Everybody, every every I'm going to zoom a fucking enough. Oh, everybody loves a quiz, right? So when you're doing it with the boys, you know, I don't know what your quizzes are like, but when you do it with the lads, you put something on your Zoom background, you put a stupid picture, you know, whether it's, I don't know, the, the Ghana Paul Bearers or... The football you know, daft logo. Whatever you want to do, or the football daft logo, whatever you want to do. So we're, we're doing the quiz with the boys, and then uh, one of the boys had put an obscene picture behind them, right? So next time um, they're using the Zoom, his, his wife goes on to use his Zoom account, right? It's her work. Oh, man. Not only was she using her Zoom, his, her Zoom account, she was having, because uh, uh, you can't have a kid's party at the moment, right? You know, they're oh, doing these uh, princess parties. You're kidding. So... My mate's wife went on to Zoom, opened up for this princess party that she was hosting. You know, you've got Elsa there, you've got Anna there, you know, there's three sing songs. 20 Is it a big man? 25 wanes, 25 wanes on Zoom, ready to go. He hears from downstairs, Stephen! Stephen! <laughs> she, he's like, what the fuck? Run, runs upstairs, there's her. On this princess party, without you, have you ever seen the picture of the massive cock in the shoe? Uh, <laughs> I can just imagine sitting behind him with Elsa and Anna. He's like, oh. So, oh. so, here's the moral of the story, boys. If you are having a Zoom quiz with the boys, make sure you change your background before your wife gets onto the Zoom. Fucking superb. What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, well, I've got some belters. I thought he's my four of you, Grado, man. I could put his my back down. Fucking look at his man, I get sent. I don't know. Fucking for me oh, the other day. I, 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 I might have sent this to you maybe back in the day. Well, oh, but I don't know, right? But I'm going to put it in the group chat, right? What a chance. <laughs> <laughs> I look like a fat gay, gay hitler. In the nude. <laughs> there they <laughs> <laughs> Look at that Tony Blair man. Uh, <laughs> it's a fucking cracker, isn't it? Just get on your fucking Playmobil haircut. <laughs> oh, it's funny. Hey, where are we going on to? Look, John's back. <laughs> 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 Yo, 
on. See if you sit back a wee bit. It looks like you're sucking his bristle <laughs> fucking back. Turn your head round, turn your head round, go. <laughs> if you are listening, you'll need to watch the video version to see this. Aye. <laughs> Oh, fuck me. Oh, what, man? Right, no. Latest rumours in Scottish football. <laughs> get that off! Oh, <laughs> get <laughs> on. Get get on. Get fuck for that, I need children's parties and all, man. Come on. <laughs> right, Scottish football. Take that story. fucking rapper. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it's called. Oh, you need to keep it on, man. No! <laughs> can mind that in the papers, for fuck's sake. I'm a scud there. <laughs> Oh, oh, I'm in a scud there. <laughs> I'll be in the table. Are you changing it, John? Are you keeping it? I'll change it for grade. I'll Aye, change it for grade. Right, right. Get fucking... There we go. Oh. Right, Cole. You are the man in the know. All rumours kicking about Scottish football root from you. What's going on, tell us? Well, remember I was saying about Yanis Hadji? Oh, aye. An Italian newspaper. Right. The day that he's already signed for Rangers. Now, why? I ask you both, all three, why would an Italian newspaper leak like that? Just put it out there, boys. Because he's father? He's father Romanian, you fucking man. Yeah. I know, but still, he's fucking still famous. I know he's Romanian. Hi. Got Actually, Georgie Hadji is a household name in Aye. football. Aye. Italian media are just seen a story about Georgie Hadji's boy. Right, just, where, how, how would an Italian team have called that out of nowhere? An Italian, it's one Italian team, team, it's a newspaper, they've got to report. Telling you, lads. Telling you. Right, so, so is it a steal where he signs for Rangers for a day? Well, when uh, it's, so I take it he's signing for Lazio the night then, I. Well, he's, if he signs for Rangers, listen, don't. What am so, I doing? You said, listen to me. Listen to me. It might get done where he doesn't get announced as a Rangers player. And he just gets announced as a Lazio player and Rangers take the transfer fee. That's all I'm going to say on the matter. Okay, let's move on, guys. No, but I don't know. How come, how, why did Lazio not just buy him straight for the fucking team he's way? Because Rangers have got an agreement in place. All right. No. Oh, that's... Aye, no. Total's oh, everything, mate. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's no agreement in place. What they've got is an option to buy. But if another yeah. team were to come in and buy him... Disney mean Rangers have got exclusivity just to go. Well, the Rangers, Rangers get the Rangers not get first dibs on them. Aye, but I'm sure a team like Lazio, if Rangers have first dibs to put in a bid, I'm sure fucking Lazio could blow Rangers out the water with what they could offer and see what we could offer. Listen, one hand washes the other, Bob. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> right, so just to clarify, Glasgow Rangers will be signing Yanis Hadji on a 24-hour contract and then he's going to <laughs> At least it's more than you get with fucking Asda. Well, it, it, no, it's more than what we're going to, it's, it's a longer contract than what we go with Sandaza. You know what I mean? Yeah. So fucking, he's going to be staying for 24 hours, then flying there to fucking Lazio. And his car store tracks it. And his car yeah. store tracks it, which I also brought you exclusivity of, can I just say? Nice. Thank you very much. Can I wait to sign Yanis Hadji for 24 hours, but what about uh, you, Gredo, man? No, mate. Fucking brilliant. Maybe play that in one of the closed doors games. Aye. Not closed doors, mate. I know. God rest it. God rest football, man. God rest it. <laughs> mate, everything's fucking, mate. By the way, what about the Bundesliga? What a fucking damp squib oh, that turned out to what be, done a it? fucking wash out. And I, I get caught up in it. I was up for it. Everybody's getting on about it, going, fit boys back, fit. Not Wisney. But Wisney. I know. And then you've got fucking dafties like Steve McMahon. I mean, see the way he... It was about fucking 80 minutes into the game and they started going on about how fucking Dortmund weren't they looking sharp and they were looking as if they've lost, lost oh. their, um, their shape. I'm thinking, fucking every team's lost their fucking shape. I mean, Dortmund going to win 4-9. McManaman's the worst fucking pundit oh, he's ever been scared. Painful, painful stuff he was saying. Oh, oh, see that boy up front for Dortmund? He's going to be a world beater at Haaland. 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 Just, see how the... the they're saying as well to pump crowd, crowd, no, crowd noise into the stadiums. Would he's making that? I know. Do you know what they should have? See the, see like this, your Celtic TV and your Rangers TV guys and that. Aye. You should have them commentating in the stadium for the players because the players Aye. that would be some buzz. Aye, the get them to, but then and then and then the players react to what the commentators exactly. are saying. Who are you exactly. fucking talking to? Can you imagine? <laughs> 
Can you imagine Rangers and Celtic at Ibrox and Tom's commentating? The Celtic fans would love that. <laughs> <laughs> What's the goal we doing, Tom? <laughs> Listen, everybody enjoys Tom. All the Celtic fans enjoy Tom. <laughs> and remember, if you have any banter for us, please <laughs> don't fucking... Toll's winning this week again, man. <laughs> Come on. Was it ever no going to win this week? Come on. I know, that's what that last says. It's been an open goal this week. Man. I just hope I'm still doing this podcast when Rangers win the league next year. You know what I mean? Fuck's sake, we'll have, we'll have fucking... <laughs> We'll have holograms and shit like that in Cunt's living rooms before that happens. You opened up to that again, man. <laughs> I know, I know. Right, let's move on. Well, lads. thanks for joining us this week, guys. I've been Stephen Purden. Aye. I'm off. Right. Just wrap this bit up. Yeah, wrap this bit up. Aye. It's tough being a Rangers fan. It's tough being a Rangers fan. And remember, if you have any banter for us, please get on the Twitter at Football Daft Pod, Football Daft Podcast on Instagram, and just search for Football Daft on Facebook. Well played, Chris. So every week on our show, we like to speak about Nicole and the team at G4 Claims, but this week, we've got a very special guest. Please welcome... The company director, he's here guys, he's here, live on Zoom with the company's director and Nicole's dad, Jim Muir. Jim, yeah, how's yeah, it going? Yeah, yeah. Well, do you have my boss? <laughs> Welcome, Jim. <laughs> Welcome, Jim. <laughs> Welcome, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, obviously, Jim, Jim. You my script then? <laughs> aye. So, basically, Jim's come on the show. He We did a script every week. Sometimes it can be phoned in, sometimes it can be full of energy, but this week it's going to be definitely the best because, well, it's your own fucking company, isn't it? Is it? <laughs> 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 right, here we go then. Right. If right, if you've involved in a road traffic accident, it's not your fault. Call G4 Claims, they make it easy for you. They can provide a complete accident manager support you require. They'll recover the cost from the at-fault insurance party. Sort out a like-for-like replacement vehicle. They will also organise and get your car repaired at one of our approved body shops and return to you should your vehicle be deemed a write-off, they will recover the pre-accident value of your car and write you a big fat cheque. <laughs> He's gone. He's away. He's gone. Jim. Jim. He's getting right under that. <laughs> Jim. 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 He's still there. Jim. He's still there. He's been in the <laughs> Oh, there he is. It cut off. Where did you go? It cut off. Oh, fuck sorry. Sorry. Nikki, that's it. This is fucking... Someone tried to find an accent there. <laughs> I've just missed a claim. Where did we get cut off? That's brilliant. Nikki, <laughs> man. That's brilliant. Oh, man. Man. Where oh. did we get cut off? Did you know? Right, I think she'd pick it up for you, sort of a like for like vehicle replacement. Sort of a like for like vehicle replacement. Send it to one of our approved body shops and return to you. Should your vehicle be deemed a write off, they will recover a pre accident value of your car and write you a big fat cheque for it. And the best of all, it won't cost you a penny as they charge it to the ad fault insurance. G4 claims do not cold call. They, buy, they don't buy data. And once you have processed your claim, your insurance will remain unscathed. And the best thing is, Nicole and the team over there won't take on your case and they don't think they can help. So if you've been involved in an accident, not your fault, or someone you know has, contact G4 Claims at 01698 767 172. Thank you very much. Here we go. We need to see the tagline. G4 Claims. Not G4 your fault claims. claims made, made it easy. <laughs> Yeah, I think Jim needs to come on every week now and do this. I still know, I. Did I get paid? <laughs> See what the best part is to you, don't realise it, but it's you that's paying us. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking story about life, by the way. Football daft. Big question. Now, this week for the question, we're stealing this with Jamie Carragher. He asks us to ask your partner to pick a uh, starting 11 of players that they know in a 4-4-2 formation. So we thought we'd ask you the same thing. 
Right, so did you manage to get your missus to do a team? Yep. I did, I did. Right. It nearly caused an argument, right? Because my missus, let's say her Nicola's dream team, right? So she's done a 4-4-2. She's numbered them 1-11. to But next to a few of the players, there's love hearts. Because she fancies a few of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that means you've got big odds in Edward up front then, doesn't it? I always need to lower the tone to lower the tone. Remember, remember she had the picture in the motor? Aye, and I'm trying don't bring that up again. No, I mean Is it a love heart on a is it a love heart on an asterisk? <laughs> <laughs> right, so number one in goals, Nicola has got the goalie, Andy Gorham. Tied right? it. Number two, she's got Rio Ferdinand. Number three, now this has got a love heart next to it. Because I kind of had a man crushing this guy back in the day. He's one of my favourite defenders. Fabio Cannavaro. She, she, she loves him. Really? Is that who man, she's got a love heart next to? Got a love heart next to him. That's like the old Ross hanging friends. That's laminated, that one. <laughs> you know it's Cannavaro? More to the point. No, because there's a story. Right, I love Italy. Right, I always support the Italian national team. I love them, right? So, the year they won the World Cup, 2006, I think it was, we were in Barcelona. And we went out, there was hundreds of Italians out in the street in Barcelona, right? And we were steaming with Italian taps on. And they started talking to me when they won in their native tongue. And I've no fucking clue what they're saying. Do you You're know what I mean? I'm real like, Italian, mate. I'm like, mate, I'm from Scotland. I'm about as a ch- Italian as a fucking local chippy's pizza. You know what I mean? <laughs> fucking, I like that talking to you. But Nicola fancied Cannavaro rotten, so he's got a love heart next to him, right? right? Then she's got Wayne Bridge because she watches a lot of the TikTok videos with that guy, right? <laughs> She's also a left back is Steven Gerrard. Love her. <laughs> right. Right. She's playing Gerrard left back, right? She's got a love heart. <laughs> She's got Barry Ferguson in midfield. She's got a love right. heart. Again. Aye. That's her love heart's done. And the rest of her team's no bad, actually. Right. In middle of the park, Zidane. She's right. got Aldo on the right. She's got Loudrup on the left. And up front, she's got McCoy and Larson. That's fucking fair play. Aye. That's fair she, play. And did she do that without Google? She done it and shouted on me saying I've done it. She says, it's, I can't say this, it sets right. up for a wee joke. But she says, uh, you go and watch me. She's like, ah, that's the only players I've heard you talking about. She's <laughs> <laughs> got laughs in there. Fucking one week to go and bury me. Uh, it's all right, you know what, like, listen. That's, we've, all, we've all been there, lads. Don't worry about it. <laughs> And what about you, Gredo? Did Stephanie get a team? Well, just five minutes before we come on, I, I say to Stephanie, I says, look, can you get me to do this? I, can you do this? I goes, I've totally forgot to ask you to do this. And she'd done it in, honestly, about 90 seconds. She just wrote it out. But bear in mind, she's, she played football and all that. She's fucking, she's fucking, and she's probably done better than my fucking day. So, in goal, she's got Buffon. Oh. She's got, uh, out in the right, Puyol, Ramos and Queller in the middle. Papach left back, Ribery on the right, Iniesta and Gerard in the middle, Robin out on the left, and Aguero and Messi up front. What a team! <laughs> hey, Gredo. Loves Papach because she played left back. Can I ask you something? What, mate? Do you know all eight players? <laughs> Aye, mate, I do. Like, want to see them all again? No! <laughs> no! No, because you just embarrassed me. You Who was the man you think I had both of them? We do it again. Right, before I I I also, if you know their names, I want you to say their first names, Greg. Nah, fuck off, man. <laughs> Jan Lickle Buffoon. Jan Lickle Buffoon. See, I'm just <laughs> taking a piss at me. Carlos Puyo, Sergio Ramos, Carlos Cuella, Sasa Papax, Frank Ribery. Is it any S has not got a first name, is he? Andres. Ah, uh, for that. Steven Gerrard. Robin fucking... Uh, Iron Robin. Robin Galloway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is it Philip Robin? <coughs> what? Is it Philip Robin? <laughs> you don't know who he... Iron Robin. He played for Chelsea. Robin. Philip Robin. Philip Robin. Robin. Hey, do you know what? Do you know what, mate? What? Going out the room, get Stephanie and she can do your back in the pod. Come on, mate. Don't bring her out. <laughs> Then that'll come back to bite me in a fucking hook. I knew it. I knew it. I fucking knew it. If 
I've fucking checked that before. And hey, listen, you ain't that you ain't that right. bad, right? Mama, mama, she's this is the only contact she has with football is she used to work for Rangers, right? Did she? Did she? Uh, she just worked in the office, huh? and and she only ever listens to football daft, right? So is she a clown paint, clown face painter? <laughs> <laughs> She's old for <laughs> quid. <laughs> uh, so here's our team, right? In goals, Arthur Boric. No bad. A decent start. Mm-hmm. Right back, Frank McAvenny. That's <laughs> <laughs> fucking brilliant. Right, centre half, Ali McCoyst. <laughs> Wait for it. Other centre half, Eric Cantona. They're going to concede goals, aren't they? Left She's just back. thinking of the players that she can get off the top of her head. This is brilliant. <laughs> Left back, Jackie McNamara. <laughs> decent, <laughs> decent. Right mid, Ryan Giggs. No bad. Right. Wrong side of the pitch, but no bad. Right. Centre mid, Maradona. <laughs> other other centre mid, Henry Larson. <laughs> and here's, here's what you're going to think that I'm ripping the piss. Right. <laughs> Left <laughs> mid, Scott Sinclair. <laughs> 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 Right. And Brilliant. he's a white of two strikers. Up front, she's got Ronald De Boer and Barry Ferguson. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking brilliant. That's brilliant, man. Right. That's fucking brilliant. I just love the fact, for corners and all that, you've got fucking McCoyst and McAvaney trying to organise a back four. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, John? What did your missus uh, come up with? Oh, but she hasn't got a clue. She hasn't got a clue. She didn't even attempt it. No, oh, you okay, got us today and you never even got your missus no, today. No, I didn't. No. Uh, that's bad man. <laughs> that's bad that right, so we'll, we'll get to we'll get to some of the teams that have been sent in for the for the listeners. Right, we'll get Fraser Smith, um, goalkeeper Alan McGregor. She even called him Shagger. Uh, <laughs> defender, first defender Marvin Andrews. Next one Rio Ferdinand. Then Arthur Newman. Then Ross McCrory. Who is also the sub keeper, apparently. Decent shout, decent shout. Um, midfield, Fernando Rickson, Stephen Gerrard, David Beckham, and Cristiano Ronaldo. And up front, Jamie Vardy and Nacho Novo. That's a decent team. That is a decent team, right? My missus works in the club deck at Ibrook, so part of the challenge was getting her to name non Rangers players. Uh, see, that's. She put Newman, McCrory, Rickson. Novo, oh, she's from Gerard, the manager, in, so she's no. I mean, she's done all right, but that's decent. That's good, eh? Aye. Do you know how, who they all played for, Credo? Aye. <laughs> Don't fucking. Kidding you on. I'm kidding you on. <laughs> He's getting pure annoyed, isn't he? I know. Oh, I'm getting nervous in case there's fucking right. I know, it's Dave good. Mack, uh, Peter Schmeichel in goals, David Beckham right back, with Wayne Rooney, Henrik Larson centre off. Ashley Cole left back, Kevin McAllister on the right, with Jamie Redknapp and Ryan Giggs in the middle, Cristiano on the left, Canton and Maradona up front. It, 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 it got better as it went on, didn't it? It's, it's funny how some some of these folk are remembering that, you know, let Ashley Cole left back, but they're saying Larson <laughs> centre half, <laughs> isn't it? Larson centre half. Aye, it's funny that, isn't it? No. The best, the best one there's Kevin McAllister. I know, where's Kevin McAllister? <laughs> best player on the team. And uh, by the way, are you sure it's the Kevin McCarthy that played for Falkirk, not that Argentinian boy who's kicking about the now? There's an Argentinian footballer called Kevin McAllister. And every time he comes onto the pitch to play the Mad Home Alone theme tune. <laughs> That's what I was thinking, is it not a Kevin McCarthy? I'm just going to say he's going to be guy for Home Alone. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, right, the next one that we've got here is Dougie Brownlee. Uh, goalie, we've got David Seaman. Right back, Ryan Giggs. Left Body. back, <laughs> Graham Sinnott. Centre half, Paul McStay and Scott Brown. <laughs> right wing, David Beckham. Left wing, Gary McAllister. Centre mid, Henry Larson and Ronaldinho. Up front, Ronaldo and David Cooper. That's quite good, isn't it? Well, again, they're going to concede a lot of goals, aren't they? <laughs> know what I mean? Hold on, I don't want to be man's tangerine. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Never eat two tangerines. You know that, do you? I know. Never ever give you the gear away in two tangerines. Why do I know. Know? Well, should I told you? I've told you this before in primary six. I went at, far enough to a, a pan at mine at their gate and I had a rash on my face. Yeah, be And it, um, it had been bothering me. And my yeah. teacher come up to me and held my face and says to me, asked me, did you have two tangerines last night? <laughs> and I said, aye. She 
went, that's what it'll be then. <laughs> I love the hangman there. You've got a rash in the first diagnosis is, did you have two tangerines last night? And I did. <laughs> Hold on, can so we she get diagnosed Kenny it? Back on? What? Can we get Kenny back on? I get you. Go on. That would have been a I fucking good question. I'll get the good doctor back on. <laughs> Oh, but yeah. remember, Grado, he did say that you could contact him and ask him about anything. Right, I'll find that out, right? If my teacher was right. I think it was called a, a citrus overdose in citrus. Anyway. Hey, Scott Bootland, can you tell my wife's English? Joe Hart in goals. Ian Aye. Wright, right back. Bearcamp and Henri are two dominant centre halves. Cristiano Ronaldo, left back. Redknapp on the right with Fabregas and Messi in the middle. Gerard on the left. Crouch and Rooney up front. He's went like that to his missus, isn't he? You need a right back, and the first Aye. thing that comes into your mind is right. And she's meant to be right. <laughs> right. Being, being right, right, right. Back, <laughs> get in there, man. Well, I'll run it. Aye, Aye, go for it. So, Anton's missus, Claire, has gone for David Seaman and goals. James Tav- James Tavernier on the right back. Fabregas and Ferdinand in the middle. Left back, Ashley Cole. I see, this is quite good. Right wing, David Beckham. Pelly in the middle of the park with Gerard and Ronaldo. I don't know if it's a fat one or Cristiano. Uh, and up front, McCloyst and Messi. What a partnership that would have been there. Mm-hmm. Do you know that? That's a, that's a good team. That's a Ori, decent team. Ori, isn't it? Ori's uh, girlfriends are coming up with Rio Ferdinand. Is there something I don't know about Rio Ferdinand? <laughs> He's got this program, hasn't he? That a lot of the women watch. She's always got these things on, like He's I always on loose women, isn't he? Ah, his own things, like. And remember, he had that now because his wife died no long ago. Aye, right? he, he had he a good documentary that. on iPlayer. Sorry, really that was heartbreaking. That was heartbreaking. Bring a tea to really good. That's a that's a brilliant team that Anton's misses his name there, but. Aye. Aye. we've got John Black. Mark, uh, apparently Mark Rooney and Michael Crouch made the cut. What's this? Your team, Gredo? Is this the cut? Jackie Clark's 11. Ren- Cristiano Ronaldo in goal. Oh, no, 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 he's not. No, I read the right way. Cristiano Ronaldo at right back. Messi at centre half with Zidane. Maradona at left back. Henri, Mark Rooney, <laughs> David Beckham, Harry Kane. Michael Crouch, Stephen Gerrard, and in goals, the goalie, Andy Gorham. That's brilliant. Decent. Oh. That is a, there is not a defender amongst that. No. Nah. No. 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 Well, <laughs> I would... You must have picked a few defenders. Defender, <laughs> what? You must have picked a few, didn't she, grads? Uh, she's, was it she look? Ramos, Coelho, Puyo. And Papach. I should actually get her a fucking stun in for me. Oh, come on, come on. Ah, but I know, come on. Don't put yourself down. I know, but it's... It's a marathon. Being a bit hard. Graham, come on, Graham. No, but just... You okay? Ah, I'm okay. Right. Maybe just watch more football. (laughs) When when Stephanie wants to watch your football, stop trying to get... And I want to put on fucking... I want to put on fucking East Enders. Watch women, Nora. (laughs) (laughs) On Football Daft, we have made it our mission to find out where the cult heroes are now on our Legends Lottery. Each week, one of the team is tasked with finding a former club legend from Scottish football and getting them on the show. Then it's up to you, the listener, to rate how good out of five the guest was. Grado, you're already in the lead, my man. 3.6. I need more time. I need more time. You need more time, mate. We're running out of time. We're on the Legends. Or a section of the show, we have no time, Grado. Right. So, I mean, I must admit, when did we start recording the day? Two o'clock? Well, the time you get your missus to open your vape juice, it was half two. Right, but the time you got to finish your football team, it was half three. <laughs> anyway. Right, mate, let's just say the new, right? You're on 3.6, right? You're in the lead because you brought on Kieran Mack and SP. Chris is at 2.2 with Hibs legend Mickey Weir, right? Last week, I had Chris Miller on St Johnston legend. 
What did I he think. score one? Is it is he scores in? Scores are in, scores are in. Your level with Grado, Stephen, you got a 3.6 oh. for Chris. 3.6? But now yeah, Grado could take the lead here today. We were, we were waiting in anticipation to find out which legend Grado's brought on this week. Well, I've, he's not replied yet. But does it still count if you've made contact with him? You've sent a text and he said no. seen? No. He says seen. How, how, how can it count when the viewers need to rate how good a guest he was? Ah, that's fucking true. It's not that, um, but... What, what Gredo doesn't realise is it's not that the text being seen, it's that the guy that he's texting is named Sean. Gredo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck's sake. What's man. happening? I'm talk us through. Mayor. Just talk us through it. Basically, only, I only messaged them about 10 minutes before we were starting. I says, look, all right, I know you're busy watching Hingley. Right, can I that. stop you in a minute? Can I stop you in a minute? Mm-hmm. Right. So this is Thursday. Mm-hmm. Last week. I've been working on the front line. Right, you can't keep playing this card because you yeah, text okay. me a lot, mate, right? You, right? We talk a lot, right? So how have you just texted them fucking five minutes before the show starts? I fucking totally forgot about it, mate, if right, I'm being honest. You fucked it. You fucked it. Uh, I just says, all right, mate, I know you're busy. Could you do me a massive favour? On my football daft podcast, we get one of the presenters needs to bring on an SPL legend. It's just for five minutes. It's on Zoom with we shall so it Bob and Toe. He's a he's a WhatsApp. And then I've given him a number just to talk shit for five minutes about. I don't know about the virus. I don't really want to get talk about the virus. Oh on my Zoom. god! No wonder he's not coming on the cunt. She don't be pickled with the virus. Who is it? Jamie Langfield. <laughs> Why That's a good one, I know. I know. Then why are you saying to Jamie Langfield, go come on football daft to talk to We Shall Suit Bob and Toll about the virus? <laughs> By any way, I'm going, I'll, tell, I'll tell you this, you know. I think Jamie Langfield's a main guest. Well, that's been John had this oh, discussion. Oh, no, any Mary's, no. It's fucked. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks this is football daft, the fucking coronavirus show. You go fucking the fucking, the fucking stats and all that. Fucking hell, man. His career is a fucking that. Aberdeen goalie and all that, and he's I like, fucking going to come well, on tell, the fucking. So tell me this, Jamie, what's happened? Uh, what was what was the higher rate? Is it the deaths due to COVID or the goals you conceded? <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, okay. Jamie, why I came on football daft to talk to me, Shell Suit Bob, and told him about the <laughs> What the fuck? No, <laughs> I'm sorry, Troops. I'm sorry for letting the, the fans out there. Um, I should have done better, but I will. The, whose turn is it? Is it my turn again next week? No, it's Toll's turn. Next okay. week, you've lost. You've got no points for this week. Right, okay. Neil, Neil Poir. Neil Poir. And, and it's just fitting that it was in the week where Eurovision would have happened. Mm-hmm. Aye. <laughs> new, new poire for Gredo. Well, it's now time for our Beer 52 teaser. For your chance to win a case of beer, all you need to do is answer the question that we put to you. Now, last week we asked you, since 1990, there have been 12 players that have played in the World Cup for their fourth place playoff and have also played league football in Scotland. And we asked you to name six of them. Well, there were 12. And the 12 were Henrik Larson, Yukon B. Auckland, Two Guy, Gary Stephen, Trevor Stephen, Chris Waddle, Arthur Newman, Pierre Van Hoydonk, Frank De Boer, Ilian Kiriakov, Shanko Sheshnov, and Chad Dury. <laughs> Who was the last one? Chad Dury. No, the one before that. Shanko Sheshnov. <laughs> How do you pronounce it? It's Sanko Svetanov. I don't know, that's what I fucking said. Hey, you're the right. fucking worst of embarrassing people, you. Sorry. You're embar- that's, that's, that's the most embarrassing you can say. You're, you're embarrassing them now. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want him quitting the show. <laughs> oh, it's all right. If he does, we'll get Stephanie. <laughs> so the winner was Matthew McLister. Matthew McLister. Matthew McLister. Don't forget that name in a hurry. No, you know. So this week, we want you to give us five of the top ten non-EU top goal scorers to school in the English Premier League. That's fucking solid. Well, no, remember, non-EU doesn't mean non-European. Oh, right. 
Ah, I see what you've got there, Toe. I see you're thinking. Always right. thinking, Toe. So, you can enter by commenting on a link on the Football Daft Facebook page, or you can tweet your answers to at Football Daft Pod. Winners must be 18 or over in Steny UK, and you can get free beer for Beer 52 as well. It's a monthly subscription It's a monthly subscription service for beer, which they source from some of the greatest small batch breweries from around the world. They theme cases every month with previous themes, including Germany, South Africa, Korea, New Zealand, and more. All you need to do is go to beer52.com forward slash daft, and we can sort you with three beers if you just cover the full 95 postage. So just go to beer52.com forward slash daft, and that's the word beer, and the numbers five and two dot com. That's the website to get your first case of 10 beers for free. Let's welcome to the show one of Scotland's most prolific strikers with a career goal ratio of one in two and 28 goals in 32 appearances this season for Dundee United. The boy is a goal machine. Please welcome to the show, Scotland International, Lawrence Shankland. Shanks, how are we diddling, my man? I'm all good. Pleasure to be here. How's lockdown treating you? That's what everybody asks in every podcast, mate. So <laughs> it's just it's just what we do, lockdown. How are you coping with it? You, you sticking? You staying alert? Nah, it was all right. Um, staying at home still, obviously. That's what we need to do. But getting a wee bit fed up, but it'd be good to get out soon, I think. What do you do for training? Run around the gear, then take a dug a walk. What have you got? Is your cardio and stuff like that just to keep your neb in? I've just been running, running in the streets basically here and parks and that, and out in the bike as well, just cycling as far away as possible, just staying at the house for as long as I can. <laughs> I know the feeling, mate. That's no. It's like Robbie Nielsen gave you all like a kind of plan to stick to and all that kind of stuff. They gave us a plan nearly the start of the season, but that was just to like, keep us ticking over. But because um, we're on that follow, you're not know, you're not like here for them or that, so we've not really heard them. We've just kind of been following that. But all the boys still talk on the chat, so we kind of know what we're doing. I mean, we just do oh. everything. So is there a, is there a Dundee United WhatsApp group? That's interesting. Is there a manager in it as well? No, no, it's just other players. That's cool. No, there's one. There's one that's like. Info for games and all that, and the manager and that's in that. But the one that's made the pretty so that you send all the scuds and all that to the the players <laughs> ones. But then that's that one player. you can have, that's made professional. You don't put that in that one, I. Doing your bodies are. So Larry boy, Gredo to uh, Steve Larry boy. <laughs> <laughs> Even touched on it there uh, with Robbie Nielsen at the United. How's it been working underneath him? It's been good. Obviously, my my first time working under him. Um, he spoke well, he sold Dun United well when I spoke to him and obviously said what, what he wanted to do this season and that was what I bought in there when I came here and I have thoroughly enjoyed it. You think, I mean, I swear they was Dun United in the Championship. Still, I find that weird, but now they're champions, you're coming back up. It's such a big club, Dun United. So Aye. to come back up and now you've got the chance in the in the Premier Premiership to prove yourself, what do you think there? Because there's always so much rumours about you, mate, going to Rangers, going to Celtic, going to Stoke. You're a, mystic, you're a mythical creature, I think. <laughs> you know what I mean by that? He's, he's, for years, it's all Lawrence Chant scoring these number of goals and all that for air. I think you're a very mythical creature. Do you know what I mean by that? I'll, I'll put that on the TV, mythical creature. I'm <laughs> <laughs> listening. See, to be honest with you, Grado, I can confirm that he does actually fucking exist. I'm looking right at him. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, um, as you're saying, it's obviously a big club, and that was part of me coming here. I mean, I knew that the club was wanting to go up. They'd been in the championship for way longer than than they'd anticipated, so it was a long time for them in that league. And it's just good to to be in the team that gets us back to the Premier League. And obviously, all the boys are looking forward to going up there and getting a bash. Where are you from? Bearson in Glasgow. Right. That's so I think it's ah, that is the fourth for you. And you still stay there just now. No, I'm up Dundee now. I moved up. Right. Hey, so was that a big kind of decision that you had to make? No, really, up, yeah. When I was younger, I moved away. To, when I moved to Aberdeen, I went up there and stayed and all, so it wasn't really that bad. Ah, you used to stuff like that. To be fair, Larry boy, nobody wants to move to Dundee, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but a, have you been... Let me tell you a story about Dundee. Right, oh, this is the true story. Right, so, Gredo, you were actually there. We, we, done, a show, we done a show up in Dundee for ICW. Sam's, Sam's Nightclub or something like that? Fat, Fat Sam's. Fat Sam's. Right. That's a and, you know, we, get, we, get off, we get out of the car <laughs> and there was a guy standing eating a tub of margarine with a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> That's a true story, by the way. Honestly. Speaking of margarine. A spoon. 
see speaking of margarine, have you been to Clark's the twenty four hours baker the twenty four hours bakers? Unbelievable, isn't it? <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> How so tidy is that in there? Bob told you need to, there's a place called Clark's Bakers if you're ever in the day gas, it's twenty four hours it's open. You can get a piece and everything, can't you? Uh, you Basically can. everything you can ever imagine you can get. You get pickles in it, all the different sauces. It's fucking dynamite. Is it like fresh baked bread? What? Is it like a fresh fresh baked bread on the premises? Kind Everything's of fresh, mate. Everything's made on the premise. Everything's made on the premise. By the way, I might sign for Dundee United. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> You're too good for them, To I've seen you playing. Oh, <laughs> come on now, you boy. That's enough. <laughs> <laughs> right, Lawrence. I'll go back to Lawrence, right, mate? I'll call you Lawrence, right? right. So you get 28 goals this season. Did you have a target in mind? Did you surpass the target or was that? Um, for you? Oh, the last few seasons, I've, I've not really set myself a target at all. The last three, and it, it seemed to work for me, so I just used that again this year. I just tried to get to 10 as quick as I can. Yeah. Did you know have like 10 after three games at the start of this season? I had, you know, banging in the hat tricks, left, right and centre right at the start, aren't you? I scored four in my first game, so it was a good start. I mean, I gave myself a head start um, to get going, so I only had six to make up, and then when I got there, they just kept going in, so... I was happy, happy with the thunder. It'd have been good to get to the 30 mark, but obviously we're this. Shanks, what's the key to scoring all these goals? What's the secret? Just stay around about the goals. Just <laughs> the ball comes to you and you can just kick it in, take all the goals. <laughs> was there any kind of goal scorers, goal scorers that you admired growing up and you thought, I want to be like him? I don't know. It's, it's, people ask You're free to say Alan McCoy, aren't you? He's fair to say Anthony Stokes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I said goal scorers, mate. Yeah. Um, I got asked right. a lot, Jason Scotland. Jason Scotland. I, I just always, when I was younger, I used to play a bit in midfield as a wee guy in that, but I just realised I was actually quite good at scoring, so just to stick to being up front because midfield was a bit more running as well, and I'm really interested in that. Nah, man. Why are the bad goals in, mate? <laughs> Everybody wants to score the goals, don't they? Fuck it, even the defenders and all that. They really want to score the goals. Did you see all these rumours? Was there any that was like how much of them was any of them nearly come into? Did na- any of them nearly come into play? Like the Rangers move, Celtic move, Stoke. Was there any of them really close to happening? Name. Or none of them. It was just, and it's always the same. It'll probably start again soon. It's just. If you've done well and you've scored goals, people just automatically, any time there's a scout at a game, they're there to watch you do and they're probably not there to watch somebody else. I mean, it's just it's the way it's been. But like with Stoke Rangers and Celtic last year, that was just three strongest like, rumours and I hadn't heard from any of them like, at Aye. all. A bit. So it wasn't like, close to going to any of them, really. Yeah, but you think you could do it in a wet Wednesday night in Stoke? I'd get a bash anyway. <laughs> <laughs> But it, do you know how it's Bob and uh, to, it surprises me that not one of the old firm teams approached them officially. I find that mind blowing. I think uh, with regards to Celtic's interest, I think it kind of hinged on Lee Griffiths. To be honest with you, they see, no. they see what happened with Lee Griffiths because, um, with, with the greatest respect, you're not going to come to Celtic and nudge Odds and Edward out the way. We had, we, we had this same issue with Omar Sadiq. That's why we never put a bid in. <laughs> <laughs> Big Sadiq, man, I pure always wanted to get a selfie with him just the size of him, man, standing outside Ibrox, man. He's done, he's done well for the left, anyway. He was scoring goals. I know. Goals, Banging them in the left. Where was he scoring goals? Fucking at the park. Where? Who was it for? No, Roma or a fucking some Belgian team, oh, wasn't it? He moved. No, he just went to. Uh, I think it may have been partisan Belgrade. One of them. But he was banging um, them in. He got a goal. He got a goal chopped off against Man U. <laughs> Shock, but oh, mental man! Fucking hell! Just honestly, like um, when that, when watched him at Aberdeen the semi final, he just looked like somebody that won a competition and won a part, didn't he? <laughs> I actually watched that game. He was straight in watch, even without sight, because I've saved I've saved a forty thousand times, man. Lawrence. Lawrence, why would it be uh, frustrating for yourself if you're not a Rangers fan? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fellow, <laughs> fellow striker, you need to understand the other side. Yeah, you redeemed yourself there, yeah, boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a brilliant comeback, man. Fucking thing, dude. So, what was it like with working under Ian McCall? Shanks, tell us that, man. What was he like? 
brilliant. Um, for to be honest, for, for restarting my career, I kind of owe everything in football that I ever they go and achieve. So I always remember that. But it was just great. Um, he made you he made you feel brilliant, even when you won the. When you're only good, you felt like you'd done all right. I mean, that's I think that's what he does best for everybody that's that's played under him. And he seems to get the same result. He gets the best out of people, and he definitely got the best out of me the two years that I spent with him. But I would I'd probably speak on behalf of most people who worked under him. He, he, he's really good. Well, he says he's he must be pretty proud when he's seen you bring, uh, pulling the Scotland jersey on and getting that first goal mm-hmm. for Scotland. So what was what was that like, man? I'd imagine he would have been because he was always he was always saying to me when I was at the area, he's like, you should get a call up, you should get a call up. Cause when I was playing in the championship, he's like, but he said, I just don't see it happening because you're at United now and they're no bigger club. So obviously that was part of my thought coming to the United as well. They are looked upon as to be a bigger club and they've had internationals before. So mm-hmm. I obviously paid off with that part of it. But I playing for Scotland because it was a dream come true. Obviously, people say that, but that is not. I mean, that's what you always do mm-hmm. when you're younger. You have to play for your country, and to do that was amazing. How, how does it work out, right? How See how when you get picked for the Scotland squad, what happens? Do you get a letter through your door? A text? You get a phone call? What, how is it? How does it work? I got a, I got a phone call about five minutes before the squad got announced on like, Twitter. And all that. They put it out, obviously, on all the social medias, and I got a phone call about five minutes before that to let me know I'd, I'd been involved. So. What if you'd have said no? That's what I'm thinking. That's what fucking went through my head. Just, I know you wouldn't, but that's funny, that, isn't it? No, but obviously, there's in circumstances. You know what I mean, some people can if they're, they're having rains or whatever, and injuries. There's right. loads of stuff like that. But I was, I was thought I was getting bammed up, so I was just sitting waiting on the, the squad coming out. And then when it did come out, there was three lines in the names, and then I wasn't on any of them. And my name was away up with that corner at sale on the right. So I thought I had somebody who's winding me up, but I eventually. <laughs> that's brilliant. Who was it? Phoned you? Was it? Was it? Uh, Frank, uh, the guy works the, he works for the SFA. All oh, right, Frank. Mad Frank. Mad Frank, <laughs> calling all the players. Yeah, all the players. Your it's like, it's like me oh, and Gregor. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, there's Frank on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> it's like me and Gredo waiting halfway through the year to get a call up for doing next year's panel, man. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fucking pretty. Sitting <laughs> <laughs> shiting ourselves, man. I know, that's funny. Good struggle for a panel this year. I know, mate. Are you all right, mate? <laughs> fucking hell, man. Rob Allen is fucking we're struggling here. I'm struggling through these. <laughs> no, I know, I know, I know. What do you make of games behind closed doors? You've, had, you've obviously played in a couple mm-hmm. through your career, did, uh, and they probably have been friendlies. Mm-hmm. But what do you think that would be like? Well, I've played in many a reserve game when I was at Aberdeen. Aye. So they were... did it, did it, is, what's it like? What's the atmosphere like amongst the players? A lot. Obviously, when you're when you're playing in like, a reserve league and that, you're you're all trying to, to get in the first team. I mean, that's why sure. you're playing the game, sure. so it does mean a bit. Mm-hmm. If you were playing for a first team, it's different. I did. I watched the German football all day, and I got a wee bit. I got a wee bit fed up with it quite early doors. I mean, it was. Aye, aye, aye. So Fucking. I mean, it's it's a strange one, but. Do you know how even, obviously you'll not be able to uh, comment on this once, but do you know how even having a coupon on it, it, it didn't make it any more exciting, oh. did it, my man? Plus, oh, you, know, just money, you know what <laughs> ruined it for me? <laughs> Aye. Do you know what ruined it for me? If I'm watching it and it's English games or Scottish games, and you hear the staff at the touchline shouting, you can hear what they're saying, even at the weekend, it's only fucking German, so you can even understand what they're shouting. Do you know That's what I mean? Point. That's right. Like, obviously, if you watch a Scotland game, you'll probably hear a lot of swearing and all that. Do you know what I mean? For the touchline and all that. Yeah. Do you know what? See if they do it in Scotland, they'll need to, they'll need to mute the mics. Mm. Aye. Well, they probably will do that, too. They will. But I, 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 got got entertaining, to, minute. I actually got asked today because I was in the club, but I've been to a for a lot of day, a couple of things for the club, so it's like videos and that. So I was in doing that, and a guy asked me about to the club. He said, see if we play behind closed doors. Would you like us to play crowd noise through the stadium? That's no, absolutely not. We were talking about that just here, just Aye. before you come on. Aye. Oh. When they want it, Lawrence, no. I don't think so. I think it'd just be pointless. Aye. 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 They point kidding. Aye. Aye. We, we were suggesting something. See, like having commentators and letting the, the players hear the commentators. Like, <laughs> you're 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 you're
Shanks, man, when when's the last time you missed a sitter? Ah, all the time. Ah, all right, stop buttering them up. You're cunt. Never miss these sitters, man. Stop buttering them up. You're cunt. The facts are there. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. So, mate, you, you like? know, coming up, man, it's only going to intensify, isn't it? You're going to be linked to the Rangers and Celtic after your first three, four goals right away when you come up to the big league, aren't you? I ain't told I don't score against any of them, then why you shite, get rid of him. Get him up, get him up that list. <laughs> what level do you see yourself? Do you see yourself being able to play for Rangers or Celtic? I don't know. It's obviously, I've, it's been a while for I've played in the Premier League, you know what I mean? But I know now that I'm more ready for it than I was when I was younger. It was just a step too far for me at that time. So I know I'm getting up and I'm ready to play at that level and, and get a good goal. But I think if you asked every player in Scotland, would they go in and want to play? For one of old firm in terms of going to play in Europe and all that, they would, they would be interested in it, you know what I mean? But Aye. for me, I want to, I want to just go up and, and do well for United first and foremost, you know what I mean? I've, that's how we've earned our place in that league, and it's been a long time coming, so there's a lot to look forward to for the club. That's what I was going to say there. Sorry, that's what I was going to say there. Like, it's a wee bit disrespectful. Asking them that. With regards to uh, the United, because the United is a huge club, and the United yeah. deserves they deserve to be in the Premier League. I know. And, I'm just. You know, I was maybe thinking. Hanger, but maybe doing a wee bit of a service here, I think. I think you could do that in the Premier League with him. Huh? Bob, uh, to Nene, other than the other service, it was Bob that asked it. Ah, that. Exactly. And I, I thought maybe he was. Uh, I thought uh, Shanksy boy was going to take a wee leaf out of uh, Jim McLean's book there when he when he off asked asked him the question. <laughs> you going to offer me a fucking question like that? <laughs> no, I'm just I'm just asking him because there's rumours about him every single week. I'm just saying because he's coming up to the Premier League now, the rumours are only going to intensify. And I just says, can you see yourself playing for Rangers or Celtic one day? That's what I'm saying. Handled that well, mate. Aye, okay. Sorry. That's what I asked. That's what I asked. The next job's coming out today. Don't worry. And I did say at the start of this, Dundee United are a massive club. They deserve to be in the Premier League. That's what I said. I bet you hate Dundee United, don't you really? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> I, I love them. Great family club. Love them. No comment. No so, comment. I mean, uh, what's, what's your plans then uh, going forward? To, um, obviously, you're going to be in and about the Scotland set up. That'll be... Again, will you being in the Premier League, that will probably be more regular than you would have expected it to be with being in the Championship. Uh, do you think you can, you think you can force your way into the first team? If I, if I go up to the Premier League and, and I do well, you know what I mean? It's nothing to say that I can't get myself in there. If you're in the squad, you've always got a chance of eh, obviously forcing yourself into that team. I probably played more that trip when I did get the games and I thought I would have, to be honest. I, I didn't know what, what to expect. I thought I was just going to join up and see how I'd done in the training and that. I was just looking forward to, to that alone. But then obviously getting the chance to, to play up come on as a sub and then obviously starting the other game is something that I probably could never imagine. So I've showed that I, I can go there. Now, obviously, they wouldn't put you in if they didn't get impressed in training and that. So I've done that before and if I go and impress in the Premier League, then there's no reason why I can't do well when I get back in the squads. If I'm so how's your how's your football knowledge anyway? <laughs> no, you're good at perfect. Good until I pub quiz, then I've no got a clue. Well, you're <laughs> guess, guess what guess what? 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 Guess Guess what? 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 Guess he, get, he took over for Barry Ferguson uh, with 13. Barry's got 12. Um, we've got Alan Archibald and Brian Prunty on 11. Myrtle McLeod's on 10. Ian Murray's on 7. Lee Miller, Jordan Young, Ross McCrory, Bob Malcolm are all on 6. Frank McIverney and Dick Campbell are on 5. Peter Lovinkranz is on 3. And holding up the table, the strongest man in Scottish football, David McCracken, with 1. So, College. Um, <laughs> is there anybody in that list that you want to beat? If I can get on par with Dick Campbell, he's a national hero up this way, so... You better believe it. <laughs> <laughs> right, so what we do is, it's a 90-second quiz, right, you get 90 seconds. Stevie's going to ask you as many questions as we can get out in that 90 seconds. You're not allowed to not give an answer. You've got to give an answer, even if it's a lot of shite. <laughs> right? You can't say pass. Yeah. 
Right, you. so are you ready for your, your 90 seconds? Right, let's go for it. Right, here we go. Which ex-Celtic striker has been linked with a move to Man United? Ben Bailey. Paul Bernard is the record signing of what club? Paul Cook. Nigel Pearson is the manager of what side? Leicester. How many league goals did you get for Queen's Park? The Warriors are the nickname of what Scottish club? Well. 17 years ago this week, Celtic lost the UEFA Cup final to what team? Porto. Who finished second in the championship this season? Inverness. In what minute did you score your goal for Scotland? 68th. Who plays their home games at Stair Park? Ray Flobles. Name Ross County's co-manager. Stevie and Bob, don't know. <laughs> what Bundesliga team did Bayern beat at the weekend? Uh, Bayern. Where the Brown? In what year were Air United formed? Uh, 1903. <laughs> Who did Dundee United sign Peter Pollock from? Uh, MK Dons. What junior team are nicknamed the Buffs? Beef. What championship side play in Maroon? Abroad. Who is currently top scorer in the English Premiership? I'm... Let you answer that one since I asked you before the clock went. Uh, uh, Manny. Oft. Right. By the way, that was quick. That, that was alright. Good going, man. Right, we'll go through the wrong answers then. Right, uh, Paul Bernard was uh, Aberdeen's record signing. Lawrence uh, Nigel Pearson is Watford manager. Um, Warriors, you got right. Uh, you scored your Scotland goal in the sixty-fifth minute. Does that ring a bell? No, I just guessed when about that. Thing. <laughs> I was getting quite tired. <laughs> Steer <laughs> Park is the home of Stranraer. It's no Brian and Bob at Ross County. It's Stuart Kettlewell and uh, Stephen Ferguson. Uh, Bayern beat Union Berlin at the weekend. Air were formed in 1910. Gradle will be gutted you didn't oh, get this one right. I'm devastated. The Buffs oh, no, are... The Buffs. the Buffs kill winning Rangers. Uh, and top of the English Premiership it is Jamie Vardy, who tops the score, goal scoring charts there. Uh, total score, though, looking not bad for you, mate. Seven. Oh, good effort, oh. mate. Take good effort. I've seen Murray in the same level, Sam. He was, my, he was my manager at Simon for a bit. Well, there you are. You, you were a better guest than him. <laughs> <laughs> Good fun. Well, Lawrence, cheers for coming on, mate. I really appreciate it, bud. We I all appreciate it. Thank you. Bro, thank cheers, you. cheers, thanks, boy. Cheers. All the best. All the best. Catch you later, Larry, boy. <laughs> all the best for next you season. Are, hey, cheers. Hi, all the best. Cheers, Take See care, you in January. Bud. See you in January. <laughs> <laughs> Good show, Troops. Yeah. You played free for the night, Bob? No, no the night, mate. No the night. Fat. Am I? Hold on. What day is it? Thursday? No. Thursday. Pro clubs, Tuesday, Friday, but I'm in the middle of a tournament where we're raising funds for the NHS. It's with oh. both Scotland and the Scottish Sun. So I was in a tournament. There's four groups. I was in Group A. The first group kicked off last Saturday. First game, Liam Boyce of Hearts. Pulled my breaks down and destroyed me 6 0. Fucking okay, hell. What's you getting paid what for this? Mate, it's for charity. <laughs> That's the stage, book, mate. So, <laughs> get beat 6 0 half of the boys in the first game, right? So, you can imagine how I was feeling. Then, played Caroline Weir, who plays for Man City. Women's team, I pumped her 6 0. <laughs> right? So, hey, maybe, maybe one of you rephrase that. I was playing Caroline Weir from the Man City women's team. I defeated her 6-0, so pulled it back. Goal difference was back to zero, back to level, play, level playing field. Liam Boyce, one of the best players I've ever played at FIFA, he beat Ryan Porteous, who plays for Hibs. So, the stage was set. It was me versus Ryan Porteous. 
final group game, winner takes all to get the quarterfinals. Right? I'm sitting there. I goes one up. He goes two one up. I'm fucking shit myself because you know what he's like when he plays against Rangers. He's he's solidy. He's a he's a bit dirty. So I started <laughs> getting banter about that. I pulls it back to two each. Then I scores in the 86 minute to put him out. Pumped him through the quarterfinals. Nice. Have you drew? Well, we don't know yet, but there's rumours circulating that I'm going to be playing, I don't know if you've heard them, somebody called Ewan Cameron. Uh, I've heard them. Aye, I've heard them. So I've been tell, me, tell me this one, tell me this one, is there cameras on you when you're playing? Yes, yes. And the camera through the forum? Yeah, I will, it will, well, if it's you and I'm playing. Because I'm certain that he gets his boy to play. Aye. Seriously, is that the rumours? I'm certain Aye. that he gets his boy to play for him. Well, Graham, the first time we played... We so come Graham. Sorry, sorry Graham. So we did a wee trilogy. Remember we done a wee trilogy? He beat me. He beat me 7-4 the first time. Right. I was beating him 3-1 at half time. You're joking. 7-4. So then the second game I played him, I beat him 4-3 in extra time. And then the last game I played him, winner takes all to win the trilogy. We were doing it for three weeks. I beat him 8-0. Oof. Right? But he just beat Jordan and Shanks, the guest we had on the day. He beat Shankland in his group. So... There's rumours saying it's going to be me and him because he's been on Twitter giving it all that. He's going to destroy me. He's Aye, it's going to draw a lot of money this man. He's me voice notes in that. I'm going to destroy you. I'm going to destroy you. He's going to go all, viral. He's shown me all his stats. Hey, where he is. Sure you've got two cameras on him at all times. Aye. And you can hear a full bedroom. Aye. Because there's no way that you're scudding him at half time when he scores seven in the second half. No, I know. I'm I certainly, know. certainly hands the controller after you, boy. Oh. I'm absolutely certain. And you, see if you're listening to this and you've got a problem with it, call me out. I want to play you in the same room. I want to be in the same room as you. Because you're a cheating bastard. Only <laughs> about a while before that happens, mate, but I. That was Crystal. <laughs> he hinted. <laughs> You're a cheating bar. No, but at the end of the day, right, it's good, it's for charity. We've raised a good bit of dough for NHS. Now. Well, that's good, man. You've also got to take into account the fact that if he's handing the controller over, he's defrauding the NHS. <laughs> 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 oh, that's what I mean. Aye. Very, very strong allegations coming from Chris Toll. <laughs> Ewan, if you're listening, mate, I'm going to pump you again. Um. Right, well, you can get us on the social on <laughs> at Football Daft Pod, Football Daft Podcast on Instagram, and just say. Grados doesn't know what to do. It's like the old team versus the new team. Grados doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know what to say. <laughs> I'm saying he knows which side he's fucking bread's buttered on. Hey, Grados. Who's that, mate? <laughs> oh, who am I supporting? Is that what he's asking me? Who do you support me or you? Really I'm good. I'll referee it. Right, you can get us on social yeah. Twitter at Football Daft Pod, Football Daft Podcast on Instagram, and just search for Football Daft on Facebook. And remember to see us in all our glory on the YouTube version of the show, which is released just after this on a Friday. That leaves us just time to play out the show with a theme song of the century. It's probably actually the last ever theme song in a wrestling show in Scotland for possibly the rest of the year. It's unbelievable, but it is a tune. Uh, sadly, uh, River City has stopped. Temporarily. Uh, my fucking birds are losing, losing the plot of it. Uh, so let's go. Let's let's say goodbye to the fans. We'll see you next week. Hit the Stevie. tune. Stevie. Oh, hold on. Before we go, before we go, we need to get Chris's big brother story. Ah, we need oh, it should be there. Next week, right? Good night. Next week. Right, so thanks very much to uh, Lawrence for coming on, Larry Boy, as he's now nicknamed. Thanks, Larry Boy, Lawrence, <laughs> go <laughs> uh, Thanks very much to Stephen Pugden, thank you very much to Gredo, thank you very much to John McAnally, who Gredo didn't know was his surname. And <laughs> thanks very much, most of all, Jim. Been for a year. Oh, big Jim, thanks for Jim, thanks to Jim. Jim. Thanks, thanks Jim for coming on the show, and we'll see you all next week. Audio. Frontier.